2025 started with a bang for AI agent frameworks, and today we're looking at another new library that was just announced by Hugging Face. Small Agents is a Python library designed to build agents. Today, we will look into the core features of the framework along with coding examples. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a good idea how to get started and where to look for more information. You might be asking yourself, do we really need another agent framework? Aren't there enough frameworks out already? Well, it turns out that we actually do. Small Agents is the second generation agent framework from Hugging Face. And as the saying goes, if you want to build something right, build it twice. Small Agents really does bring something new to the table. And that's code agents being a first class citizens. In a multi-step agent, at each step, the LLM can write an action in the form of some calls to external tools. A common format used by Anthropic, OpenAI, and many others for writing these actions is JSON which we then parse and know which tool to execute. But small agents uses native code to accomplish this, providing it with much more flexibility, stability, and composability. This is a major difference, and as we'll see later, it makes agents execute with much precision and reliability. Okay, so let's look at some of the core differentiators. Number one, simplicity. The logic for agents fits in a couple of thousand lines of code. Secondly, Code agents are first class, agents that write their own actions in code. Third, hub integrations. You can share and load tools from the hub. Then there's support for any LLM. It supports a large number of LLMs. As you may be familiar, Hugging Face has a great number of large language models listed, so you can use any Hugging Face model as well as models outside Hugging Face. And finally, as mentioned, Small Agents is the successor to the Transformers.Agents, so they've combined all their learnings and put them in this new framework. In this first Hello World example, we can see how easy it is to create an agent and pass a tool. The example uses the Hugging Face Face API model library for which you need a Hugging Face token and need to be a paying customer. As of today, the pro plans run for about $9 a month for US customers. But if you don't want to pay or if you're not a pro member, you can also use the light LLM models as we will see in the next example. And you can use any models, including open source models. So in this example, let's take a look at the code real quick. The first line is from small agents, we import code agent duck duck search tool and the hf api model which is the hugging face api model these three classes are enough to construct our first agent with code agent by passing the tools in an array in this case we're passing the duck duck go search tool then we are defining the model as the hugging face api model and then agent.run. We're not adding memory but internal agent memory is assumed with small agents Okay, so let's look at another example now with a hello world where we will use a model from the light LLM model library. We're going to use OpenAI's GPT-4 all mini today. I love this model since it's fast and cheap. Let's give it a try. We're going to start by importing OS and small agents from small agents. We're going to use code agent. As mentioned, small agents supports two types of agents, code agents and tool calling agents. Code agents are their default library, so we're going to rely on code agents for this Hello World example. And we're also going to use the DuckDuck search tool and the light LLM model. So let's define our model here. It's the light LLM model by passing a GPT-40 mini. API keys will come from the environment variables. Here you can pass any model that you like. Just pass the keys and you'll be okay. That includes the anthropic models as well as local models. All right, now we're going to initialize the agent with the tool. It's the same way, initializing code agent, passing the tools array with DuckDuckGo search tool. And then we're going to run our agent with a single question, who is the president of the United States? Let's run this real quick in the integrated terminal inside Visual Studio Code. We'll do that by typing Python space one hello world dot pi. As soon as we launch our script, one thing that I'd like you to notice is the logging level is quite nice. And because it's a multi-step execution by default, we'll see multiple steps here. So the first thing that happens is the agent runs with the user prompt, which is the question. And now the agent will call the tool as you probably caught it there. The tool was called and these are the search results from DuckDuckGo. If we scroll up and we'll see the search results, 
and here are the several search results from the internet and then these search results are being passed to the LLM. GPT-40 Mini is processing this search information. It's summarizing it and it comes up with the final answer as Joe Biden for another couple of weeks. That's as simple as it gets. We just modified the core example provided by Hugging Face. And instead of the Hugging Face default model, we just changed it to use a light LLM model. Let's move on to explaining agents and agency. Now, if you go to Hugging Face and read their blog post, this is really interesting. They make a distinction between agents and agency and provide this table, which I found very helpful. With this distinction, Hugging Face makes a difference between agent and agency where agent is not a discrete value but it's a variable between 0 and 1 and agency evolves on a continuous spectrum as you give more or less power to the LLM. There are a number of levels here denoted by stars. At the very simple level, you just have a straight LLM call. And at the very highest level of autonomy, you have multiple agents working together to accomplish a larger task. Most of the small agent agents happen to be in the fourth row multi-step agents by default. And that means that they can execute multiple steps within the given task. That becomes very, very helpful especially with a little more complex tasks, as we'll see later. Hugging face agents inherit from multi-step agent, as mentioned, which means they can act in multiple steps, and each step consisting of one thought or one task, and then one tool and execution. They have a built-in memory, as you can see the memory is being updated as these multiple steps get executed, and that provides the agent the ability to combine multiple answers and come up with the best answer possible. Now, this is a distinction. This is a differentiation from other agent frameworks, including Langchain, Langgraph, and Pydentic AI. Okay. Now, let's explain the difference between single and multi-step agents. This diagram, taken from their website, actually does a pretty good job. On the left-hand side, you see one-step agents where you have the LLM call, there is the tool calls, there is the memory, and there is the system prompt, and there is a call to the LLM. That's the classical single step agent execution. With multi-steps, the agent first creates a number of tasks, and then refines the tasks and execute each one in a sequence, and then combines and aggregates the results to provide a more concise answer to the user. This is also similar to the React framework. Okay, so how to build an agent? According to Hugging Face, to build an agent, at least two elements are needed, tools and a model. They do not mention system prompts and agent memory, but other frameworks, or at least my personal definition for an agent is ability to call tools, has agent memory, and can be specialized through system prompts. But memory is built into the Hugging Face agent, so they didn't mention it here. Okay, let's take a look how this works in real life. We'll start by first looking at code agents, and then we'll continue with tool calling agents. How do code agents work? In a multi-step agent, at each step, the LLM can write an action in the form of some of the external tool results. Normally, many frameworks use JSON or plain text to telling the agent what tools to use. But multiple research papers have shown that having the tool calling LLMs in code is much more productive, much more reliable. The table on the screen taken from the article Executable Call Actions Elicit Better LLM Agents illustrates the advantages of writing actions in code. Okay. Hugging Face also provides guidance on how to build good agents. So let's take a look at these principles from Hugging Face blog. I found these to be supremely helpful and insightful information for building good agents. So let's start with the first one. The best agentic systems are the simplest. Simplify the workflow as much as possible. This sounds intuitive, but oftentimes we tend to complicate agent flows and we use agents where simple LLM calls may be sufficient. Keep it simple. Number two, improve the information flow to the LLM engine. And this goes without saying, but the better the inputs to the LLM, the better the outcomes. Oftentimes, the good input can be enhanced through RAG, and that's a great method to improve the accuracy of the information inflow to the LLM. Next, give more arguments to the agent. 
make it more specific, write a better system prompt, provide better guardrails for the agent so that it can do its job with more accuracy and predictability. Use a stronger LLM. We'll look at how the open source LLMs stack up against commercial LLMs, but I cannot overstate this enough. Using a strong LLM with agentic capabilities makes tons of difference. And this is where some of the local open source models, especially if you're in a small machine, they don't really work that well. You may need to turn into a commercial model such as Anthropic, Mistral, or one of the open AI models. For weaker models, provide more guidance and more information to the model, and that way you can overcome some of the shortcomings. So if the model is weaker, perhaps build a better RAG system or build better system prompts or implement better multi-step or even multi-agent systems as opposed to doing it in one shot. So try a few shots, try multiple agents, try an if then blocks with logic inside the agent flows. That will improve the accuracy and the outcomes of the agents. So these are great recommendations. Uh, but speaking of models, how do the open source models stack up to the commercial models for agentic flows? Hugging Face has created code agent instances with some leading models and compared them on this benchmark that gathers questions from different benchmarks to propose a blend of challenges. So they've used multiple questions to measure the effectiveness of these agents. This comparison shows that open source models can now take on the best commercial models. This is exciting news and it means that more access and more quality outputs are possible with cheaper LLM models, even in local setups. Great. Now that we've covered some good ground, let's go and wrap up this session. Using agents can significantly improve the outcomes of an LLM app. Small Agents from Hugging Face is a new framework that offers a simplified interface to building powerful agents. We've come to the end of another tutorial. If you hung out this far, thank you for your time and attention. I hope you enjoyed this introductory video and learned something new. I'm sure we'll make more in-depth videos on this promising framework in the coming weeks, but for today, this is a wrap. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to this channel and giving the video a thumbs up. If you have any feedback, please submit a comment. Thank you and see you in the next one.